are listening to the ECG Hackers Podcast. And welcome to this week's Hackers Podcast. Every episode available on Spotify and YouTube. ECG, where everybody can go. Now watch this drive. Thank you, Belvedere. Welcome, sports fans. It's uh, the ECG Hackers Podcast. I'm the Ash Man. We're a bunch of non-golf experts. We love talking about golf. Uh, none better than the man from Port Macquarie, Dooley, joining us again. How are you going, bro? Good, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me again. Always good, mate. Uh, and, of course, the Brains Trust, the man that makes me look so stupid. <laughs> Zook, how you going, brother? I'm doing well, Ash, and... Uh, good to have you back on board as well, Dooley. Looking forward to uh, Thank a bit you. of banter and, and, uh, and a bit of a chat over the next hour. Awesome. Uh, so the ECG hackers, we don't take golf too seriously. We try our best, but we love talking about golf. So if you're sticking around with us for the next hour, um, I hope we can entertain you a little bit with uh, some tidbits of uh, gems of information from Chris and a bit of comedy from uh, Port Macquarie down there with uh, Dooley, we hope. Uh, plenty lined up, but as always, my favourite time of the week is when this man speaks. Roll that tape, Belvedere. Hey, fellas, it's Belvedere. I'm super excited to be back on again this week. I appreciate the callback. Hopefully we didn't leave the green room in too much of a mess last week. Let's head over to Chris at the news desk. Over to you, Zook. Thanks, Belvedere. Um, another busy week in the world of golf. Um, plenty of events and tournaments spanning the globe, but we might start locally with the Australasian PGA. It was the last of the three signature events with the 103rd edition of the New Zealand Open being held at the Millbrook Resort in Queenstown. Uh, it's a beautiful course with the Remarkable Mountains as its backdrop. It actually is a public course, uh, which you can get on uh, for the... Oh, not too bad, some of 295 New Zealand dollars, uh, a little bit cheaper in the winter. Um, but as I was doing a bit of research, finding out how much it costs to play, I did stumble across what Kiwis call push buggies or push carts. Does oh, anyone yes. want to guess okay. what they call it? Oh, Ooh, no God. idea. No. no idea. Wheelie, wheelie something? They call them trundlers. So ah. next time I dare to go up to the pro shop here in, 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 in <laughs> Oz and, and use that phrase and see what – what response you get but um, Love it. the the tournament had an absolute heartbreaking end uh veteran aussie scott hend arrived at the last hole uh, with a share of the lead uh, right. and and his tee shot was good found the back of yep. back of the hole on the par 3 18th yep. but um as he was putting for the championship he, he missed that opportunity and his putt went a few feet past the past the cut right uh, and then with the par putt left to uh force a playoff uh, what happened next was absolutely soul destroying. Uh, this right. guinea putt just slipped out, uh, and yep. uh, you know, just agonised. You could see the agony in his face as it essentially handed the uh, the win to Takahiro uh, Hataji, uh, the first yep. Japanese uh, winner in the in the long history of the New Zealand tournament. So uh, this was clearly a soul crushing gimme that he missed, uh, and we certainly have all putts that linger in the back of our conscious consciousness. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, Dooley, um, do you have a, a putt like that or something that lingers in the back of your mind? I do, mate. So oh, I would have been probably 15 or 16, playing by myself, thank God, because if I was playing with you blokes, I'd still be hearing about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I think it's the 12th at Port Macquarie, par right. five, belted a yep. drive, hammered this three wood, and I thought, uh, to the grain, I thought, that's, that's on, that's close. Yeah. So get to the green, and there I'm left with a two foot eagle putt. Missed yep. it. Oh. I missed. I missed the putt. Yeah. And I'm so. I was just so glad I was by myself. What um, do you think it was? A, a, do you think because it was... no one, no one saw me miss it, and B yeah. because no one would have believed me that I had an eagle by myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I had a similar one actually, boys. I remember. Um, I was playing with Dooley. It must have been about 1998 or so in Sydney at Riverside Oaks, one of my favourite courses at the time. I remember Dooley used to always beat me. He used to always beat me by about two or three shots. And I remember we got to the um, – it was a par five. 
um, on the back nine at Riverside Oaks. And I too had an eagle putt, which probably would have put me ahead of Dooley there late in the round. And I'll never forget, I had, I've had i never scored an eagle, but I had, similar to you, Dooley, I had a shot at it and, yeah, screwed mm. it up. It was all mental, really, hey? It's just yeah, it's yeah. downing yourself, eh? What about you, Chris? You're, a bit, you're pretty handy on the green. Oh, no, yeah, handy in terms of racking up strokes. I'm, I'm horrible with the putter at the moment. I haven't had much luck, really? but, um, yeah. but yeah, ones that spring to mind, it's the same. I had, I had this one eagle opportunity was playing down at the ridge. It was the, it's the 18th. Yep. It's a par five. Smoke my yep. driver, smoke my two yep. iron. I'm on the fringe. Uh, had yep. a putt to, 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 to get a nice little, uh, uh, a nice little eagle, but um, but yeah, yeah, just left it well short and ended up three putting and walking away with a par. So that's my that's whole story on that front. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> can I um, can I also dare interject? You've you've come up with something that um, in your news break there, um, a par three eighteenth. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. A par three eighteenth. That's I don't see that much. Do you? No, it, it is unusual. I think it's really a, a, a function of the way that the course was designed. Um, right. R three had a, a picturesque ending with the clubhouse, yeah. with this beautiful own st- old stonework mm-hmm. um, building. There, mm-hmm. there was hospitality around, and it just—I I think it was more for um, spectators and, and TV. I, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. It should be a par four or a par five to finish. No, I, yeah. agree. Cool, cool. Back to you, bro. Um, continuing on with good uh, good news or better news for our Aussies anyway, um, shifting our focus to the LPGA. Uh, they were over in Singapore for the HSBC uh, mm-hmm. Women's World Championship. Uh, in complete contrast to Scott Hend, uh, Aussie Hannah Green was putting on a, a putting masterclass uh, mm-hmm. to claim the title, uh, trailing the clubhouse leader by two strokes going on to the 16th. Uh, she just went on a heater with the putter. Uh, she... She birdied the 16th, sunk a 15-footer right. uh, to, to claim another birdie on the 17th. Uh, yeah. And then on the par four final hole, uh, she put her approach shot within 25 feet. Um, oh, but nice. that putt she took from there never looked like missing. It rode the brain wow. perfectly uh, and disappeared into the cup for her fourth LPGA title. Wow. So with that fourth win, she joins mm-hmm. an elite group of Australian women who have won four LPGA titles. Okay, okay. So who we got? Over to you. Who do you who do you reckon yep. are those other four? Oh, oh, oh my God, that's tough, mate. Oh, I, I, I don't. Fucking, I'll yeah, fucking Kari Webb. Yep, Kari she's on Webb the list. Has to be on there. Yeah. What about someone? Um, Min, Min someone Min who's Lee. a contem- Yep, she's she's the she's on the list okay. as well. So we got two, um, two or four. Yep. And then you're going um, back into the to the oh, legends, really. Of is it Jane? Jane? Jan Stevenson, I think. Jan Stevenson. Stevenson. Yeah. And then Ooh. Rachel Hetherington. So they're the four. Oh, okay. Uh, that are we did okay cheaper. there. No, we you did, did yeah. fine. No. Yeah. yeah. Very commendable, but Jan um, Jane. But Ash, I, I guess seeing that those names aren't rolling off off yep. your tongue, do Australian female golfers get the media attention or just the attention in general? That they deserve. Oh, good question. I I would say, yeah, I'd say yes. I think if you're in golf circles, yes, you do. I, I feel like there's a fifty fifty in marketing at the moment. I mean, you look at the magazines and the and even even the broadcast or the the Australian broadcast. You see plenty of the the female golfers there. I, I would say, I would say, yeah, they're getting some great exposure. Um, it's a great question. I think probably. Uh, they're playing for this. They're playing for the same amount of money in Australia, aren't they? Than the men playing for the. They're playing for the in in a lot of the tournaments. They're playing for the same. Yeah, they're, they're part of. So the same yeah, team. I I think I would say yes. I I do think. Um, and maybe I think uh, what's got to do to help that is probably a lot of social media stuff as well, like with the Instagram posts and the you see you know so many women on Instagram posting their swings. I think that's helped the game. Mm. Funny enough, you know. Um, so yeah, I would say yes. It's it's good. They're getting plenty of exposure. If that was a question, there, there is no there is no way that um, Jane Stevenson would be caught wearing any of that Instagram gear. I guarantee it. Uh, 
the, back the in cluster the day. butts. I think times have times have changed. The, yeah, <laughs> the, I, I'm not sure if I'm. I'm not sure if I'd. Uh, I'd almost put. You're not supposed to wear cluster butts or what do you call them? Scrunch mm. bums on the golf course. That's almost up there with. You should always have a t-shirt on. In my opinion. Yeah, I think yeah. you could be right. Yeah. yeah, could be right. Yeah. Could be right. Anyway. Anyway, turning our attention uh, over to the PGA, um, the Cognizant Classic was the tournament that was held this past weekend. Yet again, the PGA is being plagued by bad weather with the tournament having to be completed on Monday. Um, when all was said and done, Austin Eckhart claimed the title by three strokes after a final round of 67. Uh, this was another instance of a, a maiden win uh, from an unknown golfer. Uh, and I guess uh, to this extent, Paul Easinger, in a recent interview with Golf Week, said the following. Yeah. The best players aren't playing all the PGA tournaments. That's mm -hmm. over. Agreed. Suddenly Agreed. the Live Tour, let's just say it like this. The PGA Tour has fast become the qualifier for Live, and it's a sad day for golf. That's a pretty yeah. bold statement. It is. Um, Ash, is the lack of big names winning these, these events hurting the PGA? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you just have to watch. You know, I'm an avid Liv fan, but watching Liv is literally like a master's group of tournament players. You know, you've got the biggest names in golf playing Liv. And then I switch across to PGA. Yeah, and I can't say I, I, I could <laughs> remember any of them except Adam Scott was up there. So, yeah, I think the lack of big names leads me over to watch the DP World Tour, in fact. I feel like if I'm going to watch that second-tier golf, I'm going to go watch the European Tour, um, especially when you don't have your Tiger Woods is playing every week or your Rory McIlroy's on those. The names that are there, yeah, mm. I think I think it has hurt them, yeah. Dooley, Dooley, your thoughts? Yeah, well, just after um, so th that last live tournament where AK made his comeback, God yep. bless him for having a crack too, good on the yeah. man. Um, that I haven't sat down ever and watched golf with my wife, and we couldn't look away. She thought it was awesome. The format, awesome. everybody's hitting yep. off on the same hole. Yep. Um, sorry, they're all on the same hole. If you know what I mean, the leaderboard mm -hmm. makes yep. sense. You're not chopping yep. and changing back. Yep. Um, and it was just yeah, it was it was really easy to watch, in my opinion. I'll add to that as well, boys. My wife sat and watched it too, or or knows you know the John Rahm, Joachim Neiman. Yes, I've got on the TV, yeah. but it, yeah, I think it's a bit more appealing. Yeah, I would say so. Huh, interesting. Um, and just continuing on with the Cognizant Classic and, and the Aussie Roundup, um, Min Woo Lee um, had his best result on the PGA Tour in this event. Um, he ended up uh, registering his first, um, you know, top 10 finish uh, and ended up coming tied for second. Um, so he's starting to uh, live up to his his nickname and starting to cook. Um, so on, <laughs> on that front, um, you know, now that with this result, his world ranking now sits at, at 30, 31 in the world and okay, having a okay. great summer down under, winning yep. the PGA and placing third at the Australian Open and now this top 10 finish. Um, Dooley, with the second week of April not far away, how do you see Min Woo doing at Augusta? I reckon he's going to represent us Aussies really well, mate. He's coming into it. He's playing some great golf. Um, also, he's got on his side there. We've seen how much of a beast the man is out of the pine needles. Plenty of yeah. pine needles laying about <laughs> Augusta. Could be a yeah. few few good eagles coming out of there. So, yeah, he's, yeah. he's playing really solid golf. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm expecting so... him to win, but I think he'll do, he'll do all right. Yeah. yeah, me too, mate. Me too. Um, a couple of points there comes out of that. Did you say Minwoo Lee's ranked 30 something? 31st. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Wow. And then what's Joachim Neiman currently rated? Uh, 70 he odd. Is seven, I've got the details here. He is I think he's currently in the 70s. ranked 76. 76. Yeah, so there's a bit of a problem yeah. there with the One World, one world Golf rankings, but yeah. I mean, that's something we could bring up every week. I love Minwoo Lee's character. I think. For a young bloke, he's got such pizzazz and charisma. Um, I think I think it's 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 great to see for Australian golf. Yeah, I I, I reckon mm. he's going to be in the top five over there. Yeah, I, I hope I hope that prediction comes true. Ash, and like you know, you I make he's... ridiculous predictions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you do. <laughs> um, shifting across to to live, um, they were in Jeddah. 
Um, we t touched on Joaquin. He absolutely dominated the event to win by four strokes and completely yeah. justified the special invitation he got from uh, Augusta to appear at the Masters. Um, but it really wasn't the top end of the, the leaderboard that was the area of focus. Um, as Dooley mentioned, um, the tournament saw the professional return of Anthony Kim, or AK as they continually referred to him in the, uh, in the commentary uh, during the coverage. Um, Kim was a, a, a three-time PGA winner, a Ryder Cup representative, but had been away from the game for 12 years on, I guess, what's been referred to as an injury hiatus. Um, you know, in the end, I thought he played reasonably well, but he did end up coming dead last and some 33 shots behind Warkin. So I know you're a big proponent of Liv Ash, so I'll challenge you. Um, does the inclusion of AK as a wild card cheapen the Liv Tour? No, not at all. To me, it gives it heart and soul. It showed shows me <laughs> shows me that Greg Norman has really reached out to this guy. I honestly think with it, it, take him six months, he'll be back. He'll be back to really good. Let's put it in perspective. Mm. He only finished at six over at Jeddah. That's good. Cool. That's cool. Golf. I mean, come on, it's not as bad, uh, you know. And six over, I think he would have in the PGA. I think there were some players that finished worse than six over. So mm. to put it in perspective, that was for a round. Second, that was for yeah. a round. I think he ended up sixteen over or something like that yeah. in the tournament. Yeah. But yeah. But I think we'll give him time. I mean, the pressure was huge. That first tee, when we all tuned in, I had you all on the, the group message mm. going, watch this, watch this. I mean, he's a real gunslinger, and I felt for him. You could see Greg Norman in the background watching mm. him with his arms closed, the shark, God bless him. But uh, the pressure was huge, and uh, he hit a decent drive, but then his next shot, he topped Started it, well. shanked yeah. it, and then the next. So, I mean, the guy's under a lot of pressure. I, I say, well done, Greg Norman for getting this guy back and yeah. um, showing what, what, you know, golf's all about. Heart and soul, bro. Heart and soul. Yeah, I, th I, I'm, I was just hoping that Greg's going to take him under his wing, invite him mm. over, just watch some tapes, enjoy a few um, few Pringles together and oh. they can have a good relationship. It'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I watched a doco last night on, on uh, Greg Norman. And mm. how Jack Nicholas, you know, threw a bone to Greg and and sort of pseudo guided him with very few words. Same with Tom Watson said some great things to, to Greg Norman over the years. Honestly, what Greg Norman's done for AK to get him to bring him back from the the dark depths, I believe he didn't have a set of golf clubs. Even this is how bad his relationship mm. with golf went. He's back playing in the biggest golfing world tournament now, which is Live. So well done, Greg. I think it's fantastic. Mm. Can I also add, you know, Rand, Rambo, who was on last week, my brother, mentioned the golf gods. I think the golf gods have been punishing PGA with such bad weather. I, I think was the last thinking three, that myself. The golf gods have, have sort of hammering down on them with some bad weather. Yeah, back to you, though. Well, Sorry, mate. That kind of segues <laughs> to the next part about punishment um, and the golf gods. Still continuing we live. Um, a rare thing happened in the in the final round of the Jeddah tournament where Adrian Moronk was hit with a penalty for slow play. So mm -hmm. um, he was in a group playing with John Rahm and Kevin Nah. Yep. Um, as they were progressing and progressing slowly, they were warned by um, officials after eight holes that they were out of position and behind the allotted time set for where they should be through eight holes. Um, in the press release that was issued by Liv after uh, the tournament, uh, it stated that each players are granted 40 seconds to play each stroke uh, mm -hmm. with an additional 10 seconds provided to those who are to play the first stroke uh, within any group. It was also Moronk. noted that Moronk was to have taken more than two minutes to play his second shot on the 18th hole. That's a wow. long time. So after the, the completion of the hole, Adrian was immediately notified of the penalty being a one-stroke penalty. Uh, and with that, his you know score of four became a five. Uh, and what it did was drop him down to a tie for sixth and ended up costing him around 360000 US dollars. So uh, this was a pretty severe penalty. 
Um, and I suppose, Dooley, I know we're all not fans of slow play, but what penalties mm. do you think local sh- local courses should place on players for slow play? Well, when I first heard about it, I, I, Adrian Moronk, I thought there is no way a man that takes the stride of, you know, yeah. seven of my steps could be getting around <laughs> yeah. the course slow. Yeah. But, um, um, you do get, it, it, I don't know, it's hard playing in um, like country golf like I do to, to punish one person. It's when the whole group's playing slow, like, it seems to be a group thing. So, yeah, probably a penalty there of a couple of shots would sort them out, I guess. But, mm. you know, the old Warhope veterans aren't shy to just bomb a driver up the middle of the fairway yeah. and scare these blokes a bit quicker. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good point. I think, um, I mean, realistically, what can you penalise a, uh, a, you know, a casual golfer with? Maybe... Three hot dots, a little sleeve of hot mm. dot golf balls. You have to use them. <laughs> That'd be punished. Just maybe that a Foster's only, after, a Foster's only beer after. Like, oh yeah. Beer. yeah. Or maybe they have to be forced to eat a pre midday meat pie. Nice, cold, um, half cooked yeah. meat pie. Half cooked. Mm. That'll, That'll be tough out. to to trundle that one around for the round inside you. But <laughs> trundle um, it, nice. <laughs> But, uh, but just finally, last, last bit of news for the week um, is really you, you raised world rankings, Ash, and, and that's been a topic for, for a while and it was bubbling up again this week. Um, Sports Illustrated reported that Greg Norman, um, who is, we all know, the Live Tour CEO, sent a letter to all players during the week uh, confirming that Live has abandoned its attempts to, a, to secure official accreditation as an eligible tour from the official World Golf Ranking Board. Now, Liv had its initial application denied all the way back in October 2023. Uh, some of the things that the board cited was that um, the league's format, the lack of promotion and relegation, and the limited pathways to qualify for the tour as being sticky points for it to become um, or to gain eligibility. Since then, Greg has done his homework and done a few things, to be fair. Uh, Liv has introduced promotional uh, promotion events as well as relegation and development um, as it has a partnership with the Asian Tour to allow for players uh, to qualify from that tour to Liv. So yeah. it's not as if uh, Liv has stand pat. Um, it's looked to, to take action, uh, yeah. but again um, has fell, uh, fell short of gaining eligibility. So again, if I can just read from um, the letter that was uh, obtained by Sports Illustrated, this is per the letter uh, that Greg issued. It says, um, a resolution which protects the accuracy, credibility and integrity of official world golf rankings no longer exists. We have made significant efforts to fight for you, you being the players on the live tour, and ensure your accomplishments are recognised within the ranking system. Unfortunately, official World Golf Rankings has shown little willingness to productively work with us. So a classic example of where this uh, World Rankings have failed and are currently failing uh, is in relation to Joachim Neiman. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's won two live events this year and obviously won the Australian Open at the end of last Mm. year. Um, Per the official golf rankings, he's currently ranked 76th in the world. I think we all agree that's certainly not the case. Uh, However, if we look at alternative rankings which exist, he's currently 12th under the data golf rankings. Under the universal golf rankings, he's 17th. And under the Sports Illustrated World Golf Rankings, he's 22nd. Does the Sports Illustrated sort of judge on how you look as well? (laughs) (laughs) Swimsuit. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Swimsuit. Sorry. Back to you. But, um, but yeah, as a result of this, you know, um, Taylor Gooch has come forward and said that this year's majors are now asterisk majors as (laughs) they will be without a number of the world's best players. Um, So, Ash, do you believe an asterisk should be placed on all major, all major winners whilst live players remain ineligible? No, not technically, but we all know. We all know that the, the real best golfers in the world aren't really there. I mean, if John Rahm's not facing off against, you know, Phil Mickerson, these sort of guys aren't playing in the Masters. It's not the best. But I don't know. I don't know how they're going to come back from this, mate. It's, yeah. it's odd that Greg Norman has, has done that. He's a, he's a, a shark. You know, he's, he's a killer. Um, for him to back out makes me think they've got something coming. 
exactly oh. what I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't share. I don't share your hope. As a result of doing this, I've done a little bit of research, and and if okay. you grant me some time next week, I'll yep. I'll do an investor to give report around the uh, structure nice. history of uh, the official yeah. world golf rankings, and I think it'll be clear that um, I think it will be very difficult for Liv to. Uh, um, you know, gain eligibility. But, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a yeah. cynic and, and a half-glass uh, empty kind of guy, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. May, okay. may I ask, Chris, how heavily involved in the world rankings do you think the PGA are? How, how many fingers would they have in that pie, do you think? Uh, they have many because they are actually a, a shareholder within the organisation. So there's, uh, there's... Yep, yep, there's a bit there. So, yes. Okay. Enough said. We'll end that there. Thanks, Chris, as always. You're listening to the ECG Hackers podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Each week, we are dropping a new episode, which you can find on Spotify or YouTube. Also, check us out on Instagram and Twitter or X at ECG Hackers. Send us your funny golf tales, ecghackers at gmail.com. ECG, where everybody can golf. Thank you, Belvedere, voice of angels. It's quiet in the uh, green room tonight. There's no angry Andersons. And, uh, and no, he's, he's all by himself. <laughs> he is. Unfortunately, a couple of the ECG boys, regulars aren't here today as well. So obviously Rambo and Damo couldn't make it, but uh, they're here in spirit, uh, of course. One of my favourite things to do with you boys is um, what we're about to do, the next segment. Uh, who's your four ball? Bell, will you get those vocal cords ready, brother? Hey there, everyone. It's Belvedere here again. It's time for this week's Who's in Your Four Ball? Back to you, Ash Man. Thank you, Belvedere. We had a brand new sting ready and everything. We'll have to unveil it next week. Uh, <laughs> who's in your four ball? So uh, I'm spewing, I forgot to upload it. Um, uh, cobwebs, cobwebs. Yes, yes. Um, obviously, uh, you may have picked up. I'm a big pro wrestling fan, or I used to be a pro wrestling fan. We used to have a TV show on Australian TV called Under the Hammer. We used to talk about wrestling. Um, I know Dooley, you and I used to be into wrestling back in the 80s, the Hulkamaniacs and the, the, yeah. the Warriors. And I know Chris was a big Jericho holic uh, when 100%. Chris Jericho was in the WCW. But um, one of my favourite pro wrestlers actually retired this week, Sting. You know Sting? Yeah. Iconic. Steve Borden. Steve Borden. So I thought um, we might have a pro wrestling themed who's in your four ball. So we're talking about if we're playing a round of golf and we make up four players in your team, yep. who are three other retired professional wrestlers that you would want in your four ball? Um all right, I might even start with Chris on this one. Uh, Chris, over to you, brother. Who's in your four ball? All right, hopefully we don't have double up here. But um, this was one that I really enjoyed pulling together for a change, us. So thank you for this topic. <laughs> um, I, I want us to be playing at the home of golf. So that naturally led me to one particular professional wrestler, which I'm sure you probably can all guess. He will be our team captain. Uh, that is obviously, of course, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, you got me. Lovely. Love it. I would, He's on I would my abso- list. I would absolutely <laughs> love to have the bagpipe entrance walking through yes. the streets of St Andrews <laughs> down yes. to the to the first tee on the old course. So oh, um, that's awesome. why Rowdy Roddy is in my um, four ball. Like, Who's on the tee? Who's on the tee first? I'll tee up first. Love Piper. Anyway, sorry. Next. Uh, and now the next one um, is uh, Kurt Henning or Mr. Perfect. Oh, what? That's so, my second I, pick. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I can't believe it. So I don't know if you recall all the WWE promos before he actually started with uh, the organization. They kind of teased his appearance with all these sports um, yeah. stings where he would yeah. play yeah. – basketball and would never miss a shot and he would, you know, go temping bowling and bowl a perfect score. So yeah. I'd certainly love to see what he could do with a golf club in hand and maybe we might be witness f- to the first round of 18 strokes. So yeah. um, that's why I'd like <laughs> to have Mr. Perfect um, in my th- in my four ball. Um, yeah. And then lastly, 
as always, I've got to have a female to continue with the original yeah. stipulations that Ash said. Um, and in terms of retirees, um, she, I've been a big fan for a long time. Uh, I would love to have Lita uh, in the four ball. Uh, I oh. really don't need a reason to include her. I'd just love to have her there. So uh, that's my yeah. four ball. Gentlemen? Oh, I love nice. it, Chris. That's that's awesome. And great minds, brother. Two of the three I had. So I've had to quickly make a change. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> no, that's great. Dooley, yeah. what about you, mate? Oh, Who's in your pro got, wrestling? I hope I've got your third. Um, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> number one, I've got um, the junkyard dog. Would, mm. would be in my four ball. JYD. Also what rattling his, those chains. His put song, the people off. His song he came out with. His, his song he came out with was Queen, right? Another one bites oh. the dust. Yes, true. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry. You're Sorry right. Um, second of all, I'd, I would have Kurt Angle. Just surely that man's got natural oh. talent. Being yeah. an Olympian. <laughs> yeah. And and he's Still a funny pressure. dude. He's a funny guy. I reckon he's a yeah. good value. And I've gone with yeah. Chris this time. Um, purely just, I've gone with a, a, a retired woman wrestler, purely just to want her there, Stacey yeah. Keebler. Oh, nice. Distracting. Nice. Very distracting. I could imagine, I could imagine she'd be, probably have a decent swing, actually. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, you mentioned Kurt Angle. One of the funniest things he did, remember he wore that little yeah. cowboy hat? <laughs> Was, was with the ukulele kind of, or the guitar? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Jimmy oh, Crackcorn, is that what he was singing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wow, so um, big pro wrestling fan. No, you, there's no no guessing uh, who what my team captain would be. I'm a Hulk maniac from Hulk a long stuff. way back. Yeah. Um, I used to have posters on the wall of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but when he turned, but I'm trying to stipulate it's Hollywood Hulk, Hulk Hogan I'll have in. <laughs> okay. The team, so he's got the the dog Black Mo. yeah, yeah. So NWO Hulk Hogan. Now, funny enough, I've had to make a, a change on the fly here because um, you said Kurt Hennig and Rowdy Roddy Piper, my two others. I might as well go full NWO. I've got Gosh, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Hall, Scott nice. Nash on the green. Now the original that original three, the original three, the NWO. Now that, my friends, um, no the, etiquette. That's no, an intimidating four ball. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of probably a lot of drinking, not a lot of golfing. But mm. uh, yeah. A lot of pre midday awesome. pies. Yeah, that's of. right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, um, if you want to get involved with um and send us your own four balls on the pro wrestling, please you can send us an email at ECG Hackers at Gmail, or you can hit us up on the Instagram at um at ECG Hackers. That was Who's in Your Four Ball Boys. I really appreciate that. Belbany, what you got? We're gonna run one of our sponsors. Golf 49. Quality golf wear, $49. From mild to wild, our entire range of shirts, shorts and accessories are $49 each, including free shipping Australia-wide. Golf49.com.au Thank you, uh, Golf 49. Um, head to their website. Grab yourself some colourful gear. Chris always looks good on the course. I'm always, uh, always trying to, to follow in his footsteps. I've actually just go black. I just wear black these days. It hides you know, the sweat. It does. It hides it does. the SAM, the Swamp Pass. Yeah. Uh, Gary Play used to always black, wear black. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, but I always just go default black. Uh, mm. Dooley, you're a, a classic, classic, classic bloke. Always got some great stories. I've had a couple of people write in how they loved about, I uh, loved your uh, golf towel story from two episodes ago, <laughs> episode five. Yeah. Um, tonight, you're going to be running your segment. Ripped or yipped, and guess what Belvedere's done? What's he done for me? He's made this for you. Get a load of this. Hey, fellas. Belvedere here again. It's time to go around the table with ripped or yipped. Let's see what side of the argument the boys are on. Ripped or yipped. Back to you, Ash. Over to you, Man, Dools. What do you got? He's just got one of those voices. He could make a funeral sexy, couldn't he, Belvedere? <laughs> nice. Right, so this week's ripped all yep. Uh, we're going to shoot to Chris first, and then we'll work our way around, Ash okay. and myself. So, oh, first of all, I want to um, touch on putting green, like practice putting green etiquette. If okay. I choose a hole, that's my hole. Yeah. Ripped or yipped. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Ripped uh, or yipped, Chris? Uh, ripped. 
Um, you claim a hole, that's yours. There's no Thank crossing, you. no crossing streams on the uh, practice practice <laughs> Very green. Very good. Um, yeah. That's why they have. That's why they have multiple holes. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't agree more. I'm going to go ripped as well. It's like uh, on the you know Patrick's on the dance floor. Mm. Um, you know, you, you pick your hole, and that's the one you're parting for. Um, yeah, ripped, absolutely. So, because the local one gets tricky at Warhope, it's punning slash chipping. So you'll get lob wedges oh, landing in front of you. Like, it's yeah. a tactic at times. So. And the odd, right. the odd top one that comes flying <laughs> through head high. Now, just moving down the car path a little bit to the practice nets. Nice. Seven minutes, you're out, ripped or yipped. Um, I would go less. Surely it's just the less? allotment between the the time slot before and your tea time. So I would go um, yipped. So I don't know what right. what what tea time differentials are there, but normally it's yeah, I guess it's between five and ten. Whatever, whatever the tea time difference is, that's how much you've got. Fair nice. call. Well, that's great thinking. Um, I've never used the the nets. I know you do, Dooley. Um, mm. I would say, yeah, ripped. Ripped. Seven minutes is good time. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Then move on. Um, now, I've got ready, ready golf or the honour system, ripped or yipped. Like... I, I believe myself that if you're at a par, you get to hit off first. Okay. Next hole. That seems to have just disappeared out of the game. Um, I'll go – I'm on the ready golf side, so that's a yipped. Um, right. I, I'm all about trying to get through the 18 um, as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Um, I like to th- see things moving, um, and certainly if, if you're ready – Tee off doesn't bother me if you shot the lowest score on the hole before. Right. Okay. I'll I'll go against you there, Chris. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to go ripped. I think um, I just I'm a bit more old school. I think I like the person who won the last hole to have the honour. Um, I think that should always be the case, and I always like to have the person furthest away hit first. That's I'm going to go ripped. Dolly, what yeah, about you? I, I'm I'm with yeah I'm with you as well, Ash. I, I used to think that. The winner of the last hole should should get it. Like you know, you don't get it often sometimes. So it's always yeah. a nice thing to hit off first sometimes. Um, next, next, I've got. Um, should there be a punishment for, or there should be a punishment? Sorry for non raking of bunkers. Oh, ripped. Um, bunker bunker etiquette is pretty poor. The amount of footsteps and. Deep- Steps that you see these days is pretty crazy. Um, it doesn't take much to rake up after you, um, mm-hmm. and it, it's even more frustrating when you see the smallest bunker and it has three rakes, uh, and they <laughs> and, and still can't even um, you know have the decency to to clean up after themselves. So um, yeah, great question. I actually. I think there's a little bit of onus falls back to the actual golf club. I, True. I have not, yeah. never seen so many bunkers so poorly maintained than I have in the last two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of golf courses, it must be the cost of sand. It must be the cost of maintenance. Honestly, most of these golf clubs that I play, the, the bunkers are a disgrace. So mm. I don't blame some people for not raking, to be honest with you. Um, I would have lost tools. I think um, a lot of golf courses need to pull their finger out and probably maintain their um, – their, here he's back. Oh, Go to the green room again. Um, oh, oh I think, yeah, I think the onus falls a bit more on the uh, the golf club itself. But I would say, oh, I'm going to get yipped on that one. Right. Just, just really um, bad form out there. I'm, I'm with Duke, like ripped. It's um, – I was about the seventh group off today and hit in a bunker. Well, fair enough. I shouldn't be in there. It looked like a bloody marching band had been through there. There was footsteps <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, that was. And, like, you know, it was shocking. Yeah. Um, next of all, um, we'll, we could call this one maybe a duel's new rules. I oh, want to nice. get rid of I want to make a, I want to make it a rule to repair two pitch marks on each green. If you're okay. on a green and land on it, repair another one. 
Okay. The Rangers are a disgrace as well nowadays. Yep. Yep. I'll Should go. Uh, yeah, I'll because I'm ruining the airwaves. I'll go ripped. I think that's absolutely. I actually remember or recall. A member saying to me, you should always repair another person's divot too. So y'all go ripped. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I I agree. And, and maybe it's a way to get some karma with the golf gods as well. Yeah. So I, I think good. it's a good rule. Yeah. It's, um, it, my, my nan, God rest her soul, always said, you know, if there's a couple there, fill them in. Yeah. Be kind to the people behind you. Yeah. So I always, yeah. I always fill an extra one in. Not that there's many these days, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, don't get them. Don't get them from the bump and runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the <laughs> Texas wedge. <laughs> yeah, so I've got one more for the ripped, and yep, this one's simple: white pants. <laughs> oh, uh, it's 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 one of those things for me. It's aspirational. I'd love to be <laughs> able to pull it off, but yeah. I can't. Yeah. So it's uh, it's yipped. It's yipped for sure. Yeah. And if one Ash. person could pull it off, you could pull it off. I'm gonna go yipped. I would never wear a pair of white pants golfing. Mm. My uh, swamp ass meter is just runs right, and it'd be very embarrassing. So, I will never wear white pants on the golf course. Yipped. Yeah, I, I'm with you, mate. I think it'd look like the um, the little wrapper you get your scallop in that you know your potato scallop and starts to get oh. see through. <laughs> oh so yeah. There's, there's no... <laughs> <laughs> no oh. way I would be wearing it. Not a chance in hell. So. Oh. Hey, can, so that, that, can I up, can I add sorry, one yeah. to it, Dules? Yeah, can I add go one for to it, it, mate? Yeah. Um, is that okay? I hope I don't. Yeah, um, certainly. Hitting a twenty foot putt is easier than hitting a two hundred meter drive onto the fairway. Hitting a two hundred hitting a twenty oh. foot putt is easier than hitting a two hundred meter drive on the fairway. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna say if ripped I'd rather have the putt than try and hit a fairway at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I reckon I've got way more chance of sinking a twenty foot putt than hitting a fairway, mate. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Chris? Uh, my personal game, I, I'm the opposite. I'd have more chance with the driver, but I'd love to be in a position where I actually had a chance of um, sinking, you know, twenty meter putts on a on a sem, on a on a semi regular basis. I'd <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd relish that opportunity. Yeah, I'll probably go um, yipped. I think it's. I, I currently would would put money on hitting a two hundred meter one on the fairway than me trying to putt. As much as I love putting, I love it. I just don't drop them. Don't drop them enough. Well, um, you you did all right at Pac Bay. You dropped sunk a couple of big ones. A couple of big ones. Very, you're um, very animated when you do sink one past ten foot. <laughs> <laughs> very animated. Really? Well, certainly, let's think, certainly oh. let's everyone know about it. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Probably verbal animation more than massive, anything. massive. Yeah, massive yeah. verbal animation. <laughs> Dooley, thank you, bro. That was ripped or yipped. Enjoyed that. Thank you. Big brand golf balls, up to 70% cheaper than retail. We're one of Australia's largest sellers of second-hand golf balls, so you save big time. Discountgolfballs.com.au. Never pay full price again. Thanks, Belvedere. Hey, um, I got a whole bunch of the uh, Strix on Divides from Discount Golf Balls, but mm -hmm. the new ones, the white and yellow ones. Oh, um, white and yellow. Oh, Tell you what, Dude. they're amazing. Yeah, um, nice. I'm going to get Tim from Discount Golf Balls on in a couple of weeks. He gave me a lesson in ball compression and matching that to your, you know, yeah. your style and your um, swing your speed handicap and stuff. swing speed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear um, that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I reckon you'd get on really well with him, Chris. Um, if I can just say too, I've um, before I even doing the the podcast and getting him on board, bought some of the. Um, I think they're called the Culvis Callaway, the soccer ball yeah. looking ones. Yeah, oh, got, yes. they all come in great. I think I've got B grade ones because I'm a tight ass, but they yeah. they all come really good, eh? Like they're yeah. in great nick. So yeah, get on board with them. Yeah, nice. Discountgolfballs.com.au, one of our major sponsors here for the ECG Hackers. Um, Chris and I had a, a few words last night, and we thought, let's get Dooley on. Let's work him hard. Let's get mm. him to do two back to back, back segments to back. in a row. <laughs> back to back. Oh. Back to back. Um, I've created a sting for you for this one at least. But if you stick around after this, uh, we'll get a bit of golf history. Now it's time for some culture. It's golf history. 
is told by the ECG. Back to you. Well, thanks for thanks for the new segment. That was awesome. <laughs> getting getting a little weary, two in a row. Yeah. Excuse, me, excuse me, I'm not used to this. So I will be looking down at my notes. <laughs> That's yeah, so good. Know, the memory's not there. Anyway, yeah. so we're doing. We got the Hall of Fame inductee, and I think you guys will really jump on board with letting um letting him on the honor board. This gentleman, yeah, Billy Billy Dunk. Name ring a bell. The Dunk certainly does. Certainly I does. I believe now. Uh, I believe Central Coast, where he did most of his golfing. Just to put into perspective how dominant this bloke was. Not only did he have fifty-one wins. But the right. man set eighty course records. What? Eighty. Eighty. Um, eighty different course different records. Courses. Eighty different wow. courses he held at one time. Wow. Could you imagine can you imagine on a Thursday Arvo setting a course record? Blokes like, mate, just come down, we're gonna put your name on the board Friday morning and you pull in yeah. behind Billy Dunk. Yeah. You'd just be devastated. Like, yeah, yeah. This man <laughs> invented the uh, he invented the what's the course record and where's the first hole. Yeah. Hole. Wow, um, 80 course no, no, records. 80 course records. So 51 wins on, on the Australasian Tour. A few in Japan right. as well, I believe. Five right. PGA Australian Championships. Right. He Five. He led... Um, <clears throat> he shot his lowest round... He shot the lowest round ever at the Australian Open. What do you reckon right. that was? Back 59? in the day. Oh, 64. Give 60? him some break. Technology. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, what else have I got here? Sorry, I'm all over the shop. Um, no, that's all good. So, did he? Um, he he play overseas, though, right? He, he did. He, he didn't do too well in the states. I don't think. I think he made one cut in the US in the US Open, but never had a win on the US PGA. Uh, yeah. I think his exact words: "It wasn't his type of hunting ground over there." Yeah, right. um, dom- dominated in New Zealand as well. Won New Zealand Open. Actually, I've got um, a picture he... up on the screen if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube uh, yep. that I pulled up. Duels. That's him and the New- winning the New Zealand Open. There you go. Yeah. I like and... I like that collared shirt and the the button up. It is oh, uh, yeah, it's pretty stylish. Nice. And I Not like how he's putting. Room, but anyway. No, that's right. I like how he puts with a glove too. I'm a glove putter. Uh, yeah, well, you, don't, you don't see that, do you? Yeah, well spotted. But Once there's a I couple of things on. on this. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't come off. <laughs> it doesn't come off. Hey. Once it's on at the first hole, it comes off at the 18th. I don't see so, yeah. on and off. Me too. Hey, a couple of things on this very historical photo I just noticed. Hey, yeah. the dude in the background's fishing. I was just going to say, is he fishing? <laughs> the guy in the background who's running the golf course, he's fishing. And then check out the guy left of him. He's he's just on swamp ass um, inspection. The guy at the, the, the bottom left of the screen. Yeah, I don't he's know just checking he's out the white at. pants. <laughs> There's a bloke fishing. That's excellent. There's a bloke fishing. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I don't no, know. that's all right. We should try yeah, and track that bloke that's, down. That's, that's great radio, Ash. That's great radio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry about that, everyone listening. <laughs> Um, he also he's represented Australia in the World Cup in sixty eight, sixty nine, and seventy two. Right. Um, the the tournament he won that really sticks out is he won the Forbes Open. What do you think? What do you <laughs> no, think? What do you think the total purse was back in the the day there for the Forbes oh. Open? Two hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars total purse. We're going into four figures. Oh, the total yeah, purse, four, not total the first, purse. Not, <laughs> no, that was the total purse. <laughs> wow. Not the winner's purse. Wow. Yeah. So he probably did take, if you took 250 bucks home, he probably did. He probably did, yeah. Wow. Just enough fuel, just enough fuel to get back to Gosford. Oh, poor bike. Yeah, ba- back then fuel was probably one cent a litre. Um, he, he actually, and he led, um, where's the, I've got it written down, sorry, my paper's blowing around with this fan you can hear in the background. He led, um, led the scoring average. In the, I think it was the 60s, with an average round for 110 rounds, with an average of 70.1. Who do you think he led for that 70 rounds? Who was oh, second what place? Was, what was the year? What was the year? I think it was 67, and it's for Peter 10 months Thompson. there. Peter My. Thompson. 
Is it no? is it our other inductee, Newton? Not an Aussie. Not an Aussie. Jack worldwide. This is worldwide. Jack Nicholas. Very good. Is so it he Jack? was actually yeah, Jack Nicholas. Score better better scorer on average than Jack Nicholas for you know, yeah, ten months. In your face, Jack. Yeah. Um Oh, and the other one, sorry, that um, stuck into mine, I think he's, he actually had the course record at Coffs Harbour with, I think nice. it was a 60, a 64. He was yep. 13 under after 14 holes and then had a couple, oh of, bad, had a couple of bad holes and ended up wow. with a 64. So, yeah, pretty impressive. Um, oh. Wouldn't you love to see that? Um, he, he did, I think you're he right. Did Didn't he a, come from New Cosford or Newcastle or something? Yeah, like I, I, I believe area, Gosford, hey? mate, yeah. Yeah, and he, he he was the club pro down near where I used to live down in Sydney. Do you, you guys know Fox Hills? Golf yeah, just near on Prospect the, on the Great Western the Highway. Western he, Highway. He was the yeah. pro shop pro there for a few years when yeah. on his time off. So when he had his um, his wife had the children. So yeah, and, uh, well, that's that's about all I got on Billy Dunk. Um, oh, dude. So are you um, officially? You know, petitioning to put him on the uh, the ECG honour board. We're going to have to run it past Damo as well, but I do I do reckon he's got a spot on the honour board, surely. Mate, I I got word from Damo about five minutes ago on the text, and this is what he sent through: the actual honour board right there, Billy Dunn. Oh, he's done it. Nice, Billy Dunn. Welcome to the, well the ECG honour board. He's he's alongside some great names such as Craig Parry, Jack Chevy Newton. Chase. Chevy Chase <laughs> and Billy oh. Doug. Excellent. The, the official Excellent. update of the uh, the ECG on a board. Um, anything else to add there, boys? No, that, that's that's it from me. I'll pass it back over to you and or Belvedere right. if we need to hear from that strapping yeah, young lad again. Yeah, Belvedere's got somebody who wants to tell You're you. Listening to the ECG Hackers podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Each week we are dropping a new episode which you can find on Spotify or YouTube. Also check us out on Instagram and Twitter or X at ECG Hackers. Send us your funny golf tales, ECG Hackers at gmail.com. ECG, where everybody can golf. Everybody can golf. A couple of things before we go, boys. I've got a, sure. uh, an email. It's a very poorly written email, but I'm going to read it out anyway. Um, and then we'll touch on what's happening in the, the coming days. But if, if I may just read out um, something that came through via Gmail, in fact, at uh, ecghackers at gmail.com. So I'll try and read this out. Um, he makes a couple of good points. Uh, I have just been seeing a lot of posts about swing tips and clubs and yardage and all this stuff. And I just wanted to pass on some knowledge I have. So we've got someone who wants to pass some knowledge on to us. He's a scratch golfer and have been swinging a club since I was two. Good efforts. Uh, for all of you yardage gurus who, who want to hit the ball further, stop. Just stop. Play the game you have. If you want to hit it further, hit the gym, build up some muscles. Do not start swinging harder or screwing around with your ball position. For my beginning golfers, I have a simple tip for you. Learn to putt and chip. Hitting the ball will come along. Hitting the ball will come along. Uh, with the game, but it's the short game where the titles are won and lost. And that comes from a scratch golfer. I thought that was a good point. There is Very a lot of stuff point. out there on social media and Instagram, and that was the point I was going to bring up anyway. That's why I read that mm. email. There's too much information out there, and I've got to tune off the YouTube. I don't want to see Johnny's swing tips and your driver tips, and I'm just going to play my game. What do you, what do mm. you think, Chris? Do you think there's a lot of too much information? <clears throat> Oh, look, there's a lot of information out there, but as someone who started their golf journey probably six months ago, um, I need a lot of help. Um, yeah, right. I'm, I'm probably guilty of um, falling into the uh, longer game rather than the, the shorter game at the moment in terms of where I'm focusing. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to get contact and, and get my iron play and driver play to uh, where it should be. Um, I have focused on increasing swing speed and, and distance um, and just quietly starting to get some good results. Yeah, but, cool, um, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I, 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 I do, you know, if I, if I put the ego aside, um, the sentiment of, of the email is correct. Um, mm. You really should be focusing on the short game and the, 
and and the putting um, that's what that's what gets you the pars, uh, and it's the pars that that generate a, a low round. Um, so yeah, he is right. Um, I need to mm. put my ego aside and focus on those kind of things. But anyway, really good point you made there, Chris. So coming from someone who's reasonably new to the game, you actually drew a lot of stuff off YouTube. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, Dooley, yeah, I was fine. thinking this afternoon. Um, how how would you think it would go if Greg Norman goes? We're going to invite the top top fifteen PGA Tour pros to come play a crossover tournament, live versus PGA. Do you think that would ever happen? Mate, I would love that. How, how like a battle royal? That would be insane. Yeah. Like um, WrestleMania. Yeah, no, that would be that'd be something to watch. You imagine the money that would generate. Oh, that would be huge. insane. The problem, yeah. though, that the PJ don't have – do they have 15 big Daves to go against the lift? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it, may, it may well happen. I, I forget the name of the league, but it got postponed a league, but <clears throat> postponed it, uh, a year. But the tournament, the, the, the league which Tiger and Rory have all invested in, I think some live golfers as well, is where they're playing in, in stadiums and playing – That's um, right, using, yeah. Using Trackman – um, for the long, long irons and driver, and then actually mm-hmm. playing um, wedge shots on an artificial green within the stadium. That's all due yeah. to launch um, early 2025. Um, that may well be where you'll get to see see yeah. that happen, perhaps, Ash. But unfortunately, it'll be, you know, it'll be this um, simulation golf rather than the real thing. Yeah. When, when yeah. I first saw the uh, images of that, I was just waiting for Vince McMahon to pop up thinking he'd be the owner <laughs> of it. Yeah, no, it's it just the rock. very much like XFL or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> oh. yeah. Actually, you know, as silly as it sounds, you know I'm a pro wrestling fan as well, but um, this whole live PGA is so similar <laughs> to WCW, oh, WWF. Totally. It's totally. so totally. similar. Totally. Currently, totally. Ted Turner is Greg Norman. <laughs> and Vince McMahon is a PGA. Hey. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's a good analogy. Um, before we wrap things up, Dooley, you playing golf or did you play today? You playing this weekend? Play, play played today, golf? mate. Played played absolutely miserable. I'm actually, if I'm being honest, I'm finding it hard to enjoy at the moment. <laughs> um, just halfway round too, the body's still not used to getting back yeah. walking eighteen holes. Um, yeah, but yeah. It, it was hard. It was hard out there today, and hot. I'm what looking was forward the, to winter. What was the swamp bass meter like today? Better? Oh, it was probably. Oh no, probably yeah, probably a seven or an eight. But yep. um, just going back on what your your email said from the scratch golfer, I start mm-hmm. off thinking nice and slow, nice and slow off the mm-hmm. tee, yeah. and by about the sixth hole, I'm like, don't hit this guy's house. Yeah, not yeah. His house. Yeah. So, so yeah. just everything out the window, and I, I think I try and steer the ball. After yeah. a few holes, but I'll get there. You know, I hit yeah. a couple of good drives, so it's got me back for next week. Uh, I can't wait to play with you guys again. Hey, I think it's mm. July. We're getting all back together again. I can't wait. And if we can play that pack bay again, I've got a bone to pick yeah. with that ninth hole. I really <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it conquered me. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's one of the best par threes I've played. It's a little course, but that lovely, was, hole. If we, lovely hole. What we should do is print out some flyers and put them in all the <laughs> residence stores, like be it that green. Oh, watch the EC nice. just get a big crowd happening. Yeah, yeah. There'll be live on. live podcasts awesome. and yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Um, do you remember that guy that was there when Rand hit one into the bamboo and he's yeah. like he just heckled giving Rand. Rand heaps. So, yeah, yeah, great job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you actually got a big gallery there. There's the whole resort of like yeah. hundreds of rooms yeah. watching down on you. Um Chris, what about you, brother? What do you got going on with the shafts this weekend? Um just quietly had a great round last Friday. Um, nice. Was, um, <clears throat> my own play was great. Um, two over on the four par threes, which is very unlike me. But um, but anyway, I'm sure come this Sunday when I'm about to hit uh, North Ride with with Rand and a couple of birdie nice. buddies from the office, uh, I'm sure that will all deteriorate and it will be back to a regular Chris off the tee. But um, <laughs> just looking to make the most out of the rest of, uh, how can I say, summer while we have it. Um, yeah. You know, only got a couple of weeks uh, 
left. Uh, and so, yeah, looking to most make the most of golf before we uh, lose summer and then lose um, the mm. old daylight savings. It's going to uh, yeah. become a bit more I'm difficult. I'm going to miss after work in. golf. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm on, I don't have a daylight savings up here in Queensland, but I'm trying to go to the, and get around in a Carbrook Golf Course in Brisbane, South Brisbane. Um, I'm wearing their cap right now. Um, it's the only golf course in the Brisbane that has sharks in the dams. Um, right. So quite interesting. It's a members-owned golf course, Carbrook, um, okay. and it looks fantastic. Um, so I'm hoping to play there in the next week or two. My Milford single irons are fantastic. Honestly, I can't yeah, wait nice. to show you. Um, They're dialed the in. Same You're loving them. Dialed in. Love them. Feel sweet. Um, pretty forgiving. I mean, my swing's pretty um, pretty straight these days. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving them. So and you um, you went a graphite shaft, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, graphite shaft. Nice. I'm getting an old man. I'm a big fat yeah, old are. man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I hit him hit him straight. And I'm happy with the driver at the moment, so I can't complain. But, you know, the golf gods will swing me down for saying that right now, I'd imagine. Boys, listeners at home, watchers on Spotify and YouTube, thanks for joining us again. That's another episode of the ECG Hackers uh, podcast. It's been a blast. Zook, thanks for joining us. Cheers, Ash. Dooley, thanks for joining us. I'm thanks, uh, heading off to the 19th My news reading hole. skills will uh, improve over oh, No, the I bloody loved it. So. Love every bloody minute. I'm going to go join Belvedere in the green room. See you next week. It's time. You're listening to the ECG Hackers Podcast. And welcome to this week's Hackers Podcast. Every episode available on Spotify and YouTube. ECG, where everybody...